The final exposure function we use camera settings to control is aperture, also known as f-stop. Inside each lens is a circular gate known as the iris. The iris can be closed down, leaving a small circular opening in its center where light will pass through. Or it can be opened up, creating a large circular hole for more light to pass through. This hole is called the aperture. Common aperture numbers range from 1.4 to 22. The circular gate called the iris is located in the camera lens. This means when you change the lens, you often change the available apertures. Note that when you use a zoom lens, you essentially have multiple lenses within one lens. Hence, you will find that the available apertures will also change according to whether you are zoomed in or pulled out wide. We've already determined when shooting video, we want to keep our ISO between 100 and 400 if possible, and we want to keep our shutter speed at 50 since we're shooting at 24 frames per second. That leaves us with aperture as one of the primary settings for adjusting exposure. Just as your pupils shrink to prevent too much light from getting into your retina, the aperture can also be made smaller to prevent too much light from getting to the sensor. As this aperture chart shows, too much light results in overexposure and too little in underexposure. Your aperture choice will also affect the depth of field in your shot. Depth of field denotes how much of your shot is in focus from the foreground to the background. We call it shallow focus when only one plane is in focus in the depth of field. And we call it deep focus when all the planes are in focus from foreground to background. Often in interviews, filmmakers like to have a shallow focus with the background blurred. One of the most common methods of achieving shallow focus is to use a wide open aperture. Conversely, a small or narrow aperture will give you deep focus. We'll discuss this in more detail in the focus lesson along with other methods of achieving shallow focus.